we want to use the priority list given here and schedule the project below with three processors using the list processing algorithm. So for review, to apply the list processing algorithm, step one, on the diagraph or priority list, we circle all tasks that are ready, meaning that all prerequisite tasks have been completed. Step two, we assign to each available processor in order the first ready task. We mark the task as in progress. And then step three, we move forward in time until a task is completed. We mark the task as completed. And then if any new tasks become ready, we mark them as ready. Step four, repeat until all tasks have been scheduled. So going back to our problem, we first want to circle the ready tasks, which would be task one, task two, task three, and task four, since none of these tasks have any prerequisite tasks. So we'll circle these on the priority list as well. So we have task one, task two, task three, and task four. We'll be using this notation here for a ready task, in progress task, and a completed task. The highest priority ready task is task two, which we assign to the first available processor, which is processor one. The completion time for each task is in parentheses. Notice task two takes five hours. So we assign task two to processor one, and now task two is in progress. The next highest priority ready task is task one, which we now assign to processor two. Task one takes two hours. So task one is now in progress. The next highest priority ready task is task three, which we now assign to processor three. Notice task three takes three hours. So we assign task three to processor three, and now task three is in progress. Now we move forward in time. Notice after two hours, task one becomes complete. So we mark task one as completed. Notice how there are no new ready tasks. Notice task five has two prerequisite tasks, task one and task two. And therefore we assign the highest priority ready task, which is task four, to processor two. Task four takes 10 hours. So two plus 10 is 12. So task four is now assigned to processor two, and task four is in progress. Moving forward in time, after three hours, task three becomes complete. So we mark task three as completed. Notice how we have a new ready task, which is task seven. So we circle task seven. Task seven is the highest priority ready task, and therefore task seven, which takes nine hours, is assigned to processor three. So three plus nine is equal to 12. So task seven is now in progress. Moving forward in time, after five hours, task two becomes complete. So we mark task two as completed. Notice how we have two new ready tasks. Task five is now ready, and so is task six. So task six and task five. Task six is the highest priority ready task, and task six takes 12 hours. So we assign task six to processor one. Five plus 12 is equal to 17. So task six is now in progress. Moving forward in time, notice after 12 hours, task four and task seven become complete. So we'll go ahead and mark this. Task four and task seven are complete, but we have no new ready tasks. So the highest priority ready task, which is task five, is assigned to processor two. Task five takes 11 hours. So 12 plus 11 is equal to 23. And now task five is in progress. Notice how there are no tasks to assign processor three. Processor three remains idle. So going forward in time, notice how after 17 hours, task six becomes complete. So we mark task six as complete. Notice how we have a new ready task, which is task eight. So we circle task eight. Task eight 
takes four hours. Processor one is the first ready processor, so we assign task eight to processor one, which takes four hours. Seventeen plus four is equal to twenty-one. So task eight is now in progress. Once again, there are no tasks to assign processor three. Processor three remains idle, so going forward in time, we're now at twenty-one hours when task eight becomes complete. So we mark task eight as complete. But notice how we still do not have a new ready task because task ten has two prerequisite tasks. And therefore, processor one remains idle, and we go out to twenty-three hours when task five becomes complete. So we mark task five as complete. Notice how once task five is completed, we have two new ready tasks, which are our last two tasks. Task nine and task ten are now ready, so we circle those. Notice how task nine is the highest priority ready task. And remember, we assign the ready task to the available processors in order from one to three. So we assign task nine to processor one, not processor two. Task nine takes eight hours. Twenty-three plus eight is equal to thirty-one. So task nine is now in progress. The last remaining and ready task is task ten, which should be assigned to the next processor, which is processor two. Task ten takes six hours, so twenty-three plus six is equal to twenty-nine. So now task ten is in progress. Again, processor three remains idle because there are no tasks to assign processor three. Moving forward in time, after twenty-nine hours, task ten becomes complete. And then finally, after thirty-one hours, task nine becomes complete and the project is complete. So notice how the total project takes thirty-one hours, where we have idle time here, here, and all through here for processor three. Now let's answer our questions. Task seven is done by which processor starting at what time? Well here's task seven, so it's done by processor three, and starting at time three hours. Next, task nine is done by processor one, starting at time twenty-three hours. And again, notice how the total project time is thirty-one hours. Let's go ahead and write that down. Total project time is thirty-one hours. And again, we're assuming that these times in parentheses are hours. And here's a much nicer view of the completed schedule which you might find helpful. Thank you for watching.